20 years ago, God gave me a dream. In the, in the dream, I was walking along a city street. And uh, it was a covered sidewalk with a canopy, a metal canopy over the top. And I had a bunch of people that were my, my disciples, actually in real life, and were my church members who were walking along behind me. And everything was peaceful and orderly and clean. And I, suddenly we came to a section of the street where the canopy ended. And the street and the city in front of me was bombed out. It was uh, full of potholes, bomb craters. The buildings were ruined and devastated, and it was obvious that um, we had left uh, the safety and the quietness of the city that we knew and had come into something else. And so I said to the people behind me, you guys wait here. I need to find a safe pathway uh, through this. And I saw the, the craters in front of me and knew that I could jump or leap over those craters, but there were people behind me, including my wife Gloria, who could not navigate or move that quickly. So I jumped over the bomb craters and work, worked through the, the rubbish, the uh, <clears throat> rubble, and came to a place where I saw uh, what looked like a government building that was in pretty good shape. So I went in and went up three flights, and when I got to the top floor, which was the third floor, I saw that it was devastated, just bombed out and devastated. And, um, uh, but I saw to my right a broad staircase that went all the way down to the basement that was broad, four or five people could go down the staircase and it was completely undamaged and had its full integrity. So, uh, and, and being a guy, I jumped on the railing and slid down the railing uh, quickly all the way to the basement. I really enjoyed that. And when I got to the basement, uh, it, was, it was a huge basement that went on, uh, extended further than I could see. It was fresh, it was fresh, freshly painted green, and you could smell uh, fuel oil and electricity in the air. You could hear, I could hear the hum of huge printing presses that were running. These are the old kinds of presses that they would print newspaper on. And they were running and I heard this voice say, why it's Prophet Michael Cotton, what are you doing here? And I looked over, I was fearful that I was in the wrong place. Uh, but I, I looked over and I saw three angels over there. And, and the angels looked like they were, the back half of them were giraffes, but the top half, the front half, uh, they were all had human faces. So they looked like a giraffe, but they had hum obviously human faces, but they were not human. They were angels. And the lead angel was taller than the other two, which was saying something being giraffes. Um, and he said to me, uh, he, they, uh, I walked over there and they walked over to me and he said, We're, we've been in charge from the beginning with uh, publishing the Word of God. And I knew when he said that, it was just part of the dream, that what he meant by publish was not just publishing or printing written material. It's an old version of the word which means to sound about, to relate, to tell, to broadcast news. And that he said, we have been in charge of publishing the Word of God to mankind since the beginning. And I looked over and the room was just full of these presses running hard. And he took a, a natural sponge, uh, smaller than the size of my hand, and he tossed it to me. And he said, this has been my sponge since the beginning. And the dream ended. About a week later, we had friends over uh, from a foreign country, and and the man has was a uh, master printer who was apprenticed in printing by the European method. And 
part of their process when they're learning how to be printers is that they're all given a natural sponge. The natural sponge is what you wipe down the press after you're finished, they're getting ready to start a new run, uh, to get every little speck of dust off, they wipe down the press with this sponge and each printer has his own sponge. And to this day I still feel in my right hand the weight of that sponge, it's never gone away. So we didn't know what to do, what to make of this dream uh, at that time. Uh, and so we did what we always do. Uh, we wrote down the dream, put it in our prophetic journal, and left it alone. Three weeks ago, well actually on July 24, I was uh, in church at my home church, Living Hope Church in Kernersville, North Carolina. That is indeed a plug. Uh, I was in that church and, and I had sat down in my seat prior to the service and God immediately took me to the opening scene of that dream from 20 years ago. And in that opening scene, we had come in the walkway that was covered with a metal canopy right up to the place where the canopy was gone and the city was devastated in front of me. And he said to me, clear as a bell, that is now. And I left it alone. We had a great church meeting. And at the end of it, uh, uh, a brother came up to me and he gave me another word, which we're going to put right here. Hey there, my name is Chris. And today I would like to share with you a prophecy uh, that I received and was instructed by the Lord to give to Michael Cotton. So on the morning of July 24th, uh, we were finishing up a, a fantastic church service. And as we were worshiping at the end of our church service, God revealed to me a vision. He gave me a vision of a pillar, like an ancient pillar, that was standing on, its, on a foundation, a solid foundation. But this pillar was standing up, but it was, it was the ruins of whatever structure it was, but the pillar was still standing. It wasn't doing its job anymore. It wasn't holding the roof. It was a pillar that was still standing strong on its foundation. And so, as, as this prophecy kept coming to me, the Lord pointed out to me and said, give it to Michael Cotton. That's, that's who I want you to tell this prophecy to. That's who it's for. And so I walked up to Michael. Well, before I walked up to Michael, I was like, well, Lord, how is this going to be? How am I going to get him to like maybe see this? And the Lord instructed me to just look up an image. So I looked up that image that I shared with Michael, which was that right there. And I shared with Michael this image, and I said, and I and I shared with what God was prophesying to Michael, and I shared with him that he that God said that he was one of those pillars in the time to come, and looking at the image and seeing the vision in my head, I, I could see that it was the ruins, but God told me that Michael was one of those pillars. And he, was, and he was standing on the foundation, a solid foundation of the Word of God and Christ. And that in, in the years to come and what was coming, that he was going to be a pillar. And he was going to be standing strong in the Lord, even, even in the most difficult situations in, in the rest of his life, which may be in the ruins. So let's talk about what this means. This dream is for now. The fact that it's for now, that is that this dream has been activated, has also, the dream's been activated not only by the word given to me on that Sunday morning, but also by the word given Chris in that same meeting. This dream has been activated, meaning it's for now. Resist the impulse to try to say that this dream 
is for another time. Rather, it is for now. Now, the first thing was this awning. Uh, we were on this awning on the sidewalk. That awning was a metal awning attached to the building on one side with metal posts on the curbside. And, and that awning represents God's protection and his keeping and his covering. Um, and you might say we've not been under God's protection, but you, we will all realize later that the time we've been through up until now, we have indeed been under a covering and a protection. We've been in an orderly city where everything ran like it should. Uh, on the canopy sidewalk, and we were bomb-proof and safe from attack. But God says that covering is now gone. Um, <clears throat> confidence in man's protection will fail, but the foundational truth of God will not be shaken. Um, it says in Colossians 1.17, He holds all things together by the word of His power. So all God has to do at any time is begin to remove his, this holding together, this protection, and things begin to happen. We didn't think they could happen. We may think they're supernatural, but without the covering and protection of God, uh, the church and everyone else is in serious trouble. So in the dream, I was able to leap over the rubble and make progress. Uh, but many following me were not so nimble. Uh, survival in the coming time cannot be dependent on human strength or agility or smarts. Listen to me now. You may think, I can always figure out a solution. I can always work a way through. And I'm nimble. I can jump here. I can jump there. But this is, that may be you. But it's not everybody. And God says that He's not setting things up in this time so that only the smart and fast and nimble will be able to survive and progress. Uh, I'm reminded when uh, Joshua was crossing the Jordan and bringing the people of Israel, Moses was dead, bringing the people of Israel across to the Promised Land, uh, the river was in flood. And God, God told Joshua, take the ark, uh, get your man, take the ark, bring it down into the river. And as soon as they, the soles of their feet touched the water, the water backed up uh, all the way to a city called Adam. And uh, they went out into the middle of the river and they stood there. Then all the people, so they went before the people into the flooding river. Then all the people came in and crossed and went out the other side. Then the leaders that had gone in first came up last. And when their feet hit the other bank, then the river started flowing again. I want to prophesy to you that God says that in the coming time, even though the nation is coming into judgment, even though the church will be coming under attack or persecution, which it will, uh, God says, do not fear. He will, bring, he will go in before you and He will come up after you. And you do not have to fear about whether you will be able to make it through. God says you will come through because He is your shepherd. He is the shepherd and bishop of your soul. And He, the example He gave with Joshua and those brothers carrying that Ark of the Covenant, you remember that because God will take us all through. You don't have to be smart or quick. All right, second, I went down, on down the street and I saw the government building. It looked like a courthouse, city hall. I go up in there, when I get to the third floor, it's completely gone, been bombed out of existence. God says that the upper levels of government leadership will be devastated during this time. If you haven't already realized that the upper levels of our government, the national government, many people in state government, uh, uh, has been devastated. There are foolish things going on, absolutely foolish and ridiculous things uh, that all seem to be aimed at destroying the country, creating havoc, 
Uh, but God has already told you that this is going to be happening. Upper levels of leadership will be devastated during this time. Pray for your national leaders and pray for the leaders of your churches. For even as this happens in the, in the natural, it will also be happening in the church. And many upper levels of church leadership have been and will be utterly devastated. Then we go on. I, so I left the, the devastation of the upper levels of leadership and I slid right down the balcony to the basement. Now let me tell you something, this basement, it was just, it was orderly, it was quiet, the humming of machines, the little smell of fuel oil, the little smell of electricity from the motors, it's a wonderful smell. Uh, it was quiet, it was peaceful, it was orderly, and the way down to this basement was wide open and unobstructed. This basement is the foundation. It is the foundational Word of God. And we will be able to access this foundational Word of God anytime, day or night. We'll be able to, if you want to, slide down the balcony. You'll be able to slide right down. You can walk down in a sedate way. Do whatever you want to do. I'm going to slide because I've always wanted to slide down balconies. Um, uh, it's available. It is the place of refuge. It is the place of safety in the coming days. You will not find safety in your trying to figure things out. You will not find safety in having other people try to figure things out and tell you all this stuff and what to do, and what's talked about. And no, no, but the Word of God will be... Uh, the common sense, it'll be your balance, it'll be your walking stick, it'll be your crutch, it'll be the thing, the person you hold on to next to you, it will be available to you. So, the angel tossed me this sponge, and uh, I found out later when my friend came uh, to visit us, it was just a few weeks later, that uh, uh, the sponge is a part of the old thing with printing. It's how you clean the press. You don't want a little speck of dust on this thing. You want it wiped clean. And that's what the angel tossed me. So we're also coming into a time when God's going to release fresh understanding, fresh revelation uh, of the Word of God. Uh, he will publish abroad once again in every possible way. In, in, in printing, in YouTube videos and blogs and even with Twitter and all that other stuff, uh, God's going to release the Word of God. There will be an avalanche and it will be a fresh release of the Word of God for today. It's not going to be stale. It's going to be what, we're to, what we will need today. God's going to raise up for that purpose. Speakers, teachers, uh, preachers, uh, bloggers, uh, YouTubers. He's going to raise people up to uh, release the Word of God in a fresh way. This is where sanity is. And God says, go down to the basement. Uh, that's where sanity is. We've been in a time when there's been tremendous a, a tremendous attack on the Word of God. Uh, uh, and the world, Satan has done a, a massive job at bringing confusion to who we are, who we're supposed to be. The world is fighting about this. And uh, the church has over and over been silent saying, uh, if you say this, if you disagree with this, if you disagree with this or that, uh, we will silence you and condemn you and punish you greatly. You will be fired. And I'm seeing every week in the paper, uh, people are being fired for standing up and just disagreeing with the culture and speaking agreement with the scripture. Um, fear of man or fear that someone would be offended uh, has driven 
the silence of the church. The church has in large measure not been responding to any of these cultural attacks coming against us. Uh, God spoke to me years ago out of Joel 3.14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So let me tell you, God is going to drive you and me and His church everywhere in the United States into this valley of decision. You will not be able to fly under the radar, be silent, not engage. You will be forced into the valley of decision. And it is one of the major factors of why all of this is happening now. You will not be able to remain silent. And God will deal with our fear of man to bring us to the place where the church is supposed to be. So here we are. God is driving us by circumstance to come into a time of persecution and testing. You will not be able to be safe and hide in the middle of what's happening. God bless you.